Hi everyone! I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming to my violin recital today. It really means a lot that you're here and I really appreciate that you get to partake in one of the biggest accomplishments in my musical career. So right now we are going to have a 30 minute intermission for COVID regulations at the college. So I figured that this will be a good time to kind of talk a little bit about each piece that you are going to hear today or have heard today and just a little bit about each composer and then kind of wrapping up a little bit my undergraduate experience at Grand Valley. You're welcome to stay and listen, get up, get a drink of water, go to the bathroom, grab a snack. It doesn't matter, but I just figured that I could fill the void, the 30 minute void with some talking. So with that being said, this is my senior project for the Honors College. And in addition to a recital, I have a pamphlet for the program as well as extensive program notes. I will throw that in the Facebook group as a attachment. So you're welcome to look at that and read a little bit more about each composer but I'm just gonna kind of go through and talk about each piece and each composer a little bit more. So the first piece that I played for you guys is the Concerto in E Minor, Opus 64 by Felix Mendelssohn. I began this piece when I returned from my study abroad semester in Ireland, and each semester I learned a new movement. This piece has pushed me in violin virtuosity, and I've learned so many new skills and techniques playing this piece. Um, this piece has a special place in my heart because it was the last thing that I worked on with my junior high slash high school violin teacher, Jenny, before she passed. So with that being said, I'm really thankful that I've been able to learn all three movements and be able to perform it for my senior year. A little bit about the composer, Felix Mendelssohn was a German composer and he lived from February 3, 1809 to November 4, 1847. In addition to being a composer, he was also a conductor, pianist, and an organist. Uh, Mendelssohn was inspired by other composers such as Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, and Weber. Mendelssohn wrote his final violin concerto in E minor, Opus 64, over several years, and it was completed in September of 1844. This violin concerto is one of the most important violin concertos of the 19th century. That's because this movement was, or this piece was very distinctive, and it had a lot of novel features in every movement. So for example, the first movement is unique because it has a very early entrance for the soloist and a beautiful first theme. And the cadenza to this piece ties really well into the development and the recapitulation, which is very interesting. The second movement that you heard was a lot slower and lyrical and it was in a tertiary ABA format. So a very like simple, beautiful piece. The third movement is a very playful finale and it appears in a sonata rondo form and it's coined as a capricious Mendelssohnian scherzo. It's been super fun learning this piece and I was very excited to be able to perform that for you guys today. The second piece that follows the intermission is called Irish Rhapsody No. 6, Opus 191. This is by Charles Villiers Stanford. I picked this piece because it reflects back on my study abroad trip to Ireland in the fall of 2018. And uh, this piece was written to resemble the beauty, culture, and landscape of Ireland. The composer Charles Villiers Stanford was born in Dublin on September 1852 and died in London on March 29, 1924. Stanford was a British composer, teacher, conductor, and musician. He wrote brilliant music for all genres, but he was most known for his operas, church music, and for his passion of teaching. His piece I'm performing today, Irish Rhapsody No. 6, Opus 191, 
was written for violin and orchestra in 1922 and it premiered in London in 1923. Although this piece is not his most well known for violin and orchestra, the tranquil beginning does a good job resembling the beauty of the Irish landscape and the second half is a fun-filled jig and that really showcases the culture of Ireland and the kind-hearted and joyful people that live there. When I first heard this piece, I thought it perfectly captured Ireland in a nutshell. The last piece that you'll hear today is the Romance Number no. 23 by Amy Beach. Amy Beach is an American composer who lived from September 5, 1867 to December 27, 1944. She was the first American woman to be a successful composer and she was celebrated during her lifetime as the foremost woman composer in the United States. She was a vocalist and pianist and she began composing after one year of studying harmony and counterpoint. She was so enthusiastic about her compositions that she was able to compose large scale pieces in a few days and she made arrangements for performances as soon as her work was done. Her melodic lines that she writes for her instrumental compositions are very inspired by her songs and lyrical melodies and her piece fits well into the romantic area and she utilized modal degrees, mixed modes, and associated key with different colors and emotions. Her piece, Romance Number no. 23, was written for the violin in 1893, and this piece showcases the lyrical melodies, dramatic emotions, and qualities of the Romantic era. Romance Number no. 23 is the perfect piece to conclude my recital and my musical education because it embodies my love for music and for the violin. Music will always be an important part of who I am, and I am blessed to have the opportunity to show my love for the violin with those that are present today. So that is the order and the contents of my recital, and I just want to conclude with um, that this recital would not be possible without the support from the GVSU school music staff, my family, and my friends. I would like to extend a special thank you to, to my professor, Megan Crawford, for all her hard work, dedication, and persistence to my success and growth as a musician. I would also like to thank my accompanist, Justin Colwell, for working diligent with me to make my recital a success. Also, thank you, Nate Blitton, for helping me with my live stream, sound, and space setup. And lastly, I would like to thank my family and friends for all the support over the years. Your encouragement and support have helped me continue along my path as a musician, and I am forever thankful for your impact on my life. Thank you for attending my violin recital this evening virtually. Your support means the world to me. So this second part of the intermission, I just kind of planned on playing some, like a slideshow video of my trip abroad and potentially some photos of me participating in different events through GVSU's music program. And I just wanna say before I tune out and switch it over to the video that Playing at Grand Valley has been one of the best decisions that I've made in my undergraduate degree because it's allowed me to continue to play, but it also prepared me for my future. So being able to juggle my science and my music throughout the four years has been a blessing. It's kept me sane. It helped me get into grad school. I am super excited to go to Western in the fall for PA school, and I'm also hopefully gonna play in the Kalamazoo Community Orchestra. I'm really excited to keep playing, and I hope that music is able to be as much of a blessing to me as it is to you. And with that being said, I hope you enjoy the second part of my recital. Thank you so much for staying tuned.